Mirio's original. Hello and welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we read your emails and play your voicemails and read your reviews. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I, producer Maria. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so let's see if we have any emails that are worth reading. Oh, we have a Lisa Frank interview. Yes, read that one. That's crazy. From Anna. Hi, ladies. Last year, while hiring for a position at my company, I came across a resume that listed a position gardening for Lisa Frank. Obviously, this sent me into a tizzy and I had to interview this woman, not to interview her for my position, but to try to get her to hire me for her former position. Anyways, I asked about how she came to garden for Lisa Frank and she told me she responded to a very sketchy Craigslist ad that didn't reveal the company name. She then met a random person on a park bench for her interview and got the job. Only then did the interviewer reveal that she was the one and only Lisa Frank. Maybe she's mysterious like Michael Jackson, or maybe she can't drop her company name because there's such a bad rap with the employees. She ended up gardening at Lisa Frank's many homes for 10 years. Regardless of all the horrible things I just learned listening to the episode, I'd still take the job. Lisa Frank is hot as hell. (laughs) Hot as hell. It's grand as hotter. Here's a crazy email. It's from Diane. The subject is a chilling connection to a serial killer. So my ex-husband used to work as a skip uh, skip tracer for Sears credit cards. He had been trying to contact a customer who had stopped paying his bill to no avail. So he called that customer's neighbor to try to get information about the customer. The neighbor was practically hysterical when my ex called. She said that her neighbor was crazy and really weird. He'd just gotten into a fight or something and chased his boyfriend down naked down the street and the cops didn't do anything about it. She said that she kept trying to tell the cops that there was something really wrong with this guy, but they ignored her pleas to arrest him. The customer, Jeffrey Dahmer. Whoa. The product he had stopped paying for on his credit card, a refrigerator. No. <laughs> no. no. Oh, my God. No. Insane. Come oh on. I, that's Whoa. my favorite email we've ever received. That's wild. Wow. Crazy, Diane? man. Diane. Diane. You've done it again. You've done it again, <laughs> Diane. Oh, my um, God. I know. Imagine that. You call, you're like, hi, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, you've stopped paying for your refrigerator <laughs> payments. You store, you your dead store all your dead bodies in. in. <laughs> um, incredible. Like, I probably would have let that amazing. one go. Okay, should we play some voicemails since we probably have 40 million of them? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, this voicemail is for the web crawlers. My name is Liz. I've been listening to you guys for I know, a couple of months, I think I heard about you guys through like an advertisement during the Alarmist podcast. I love Ooh. you guys both. Um, anyways, I'm calling because as I was walking to work today, I looked down and there was a dead bird on the ground. Ooh. And I know, welcome. Uh, I think it was about last week, you talked to the <laughs> lady about spirit animals. And I think it was Allie said she's been asking the universe to show her feathers, but she's been seeing dead birds instead. So kind of a quinky thing kind of thing for me to see the dead bird. Then it made me think maybe my spirit animal is a bird. I don't really like birds maybe. at all, but they seem to surround me in life. Um, I'll probably get some hate for this, but I really don't like hummingbirds. Um, they're kind of the assholes of the bird population. <laughs> one sure. would, um, I lived in Colorado for a while and one would basically attack me every time I went outside. I mean, I know it had a nest, oh, but I just wanted to live Scary. my life outside and drink in my kiddie pool like an adult. But this hummingbird <laughs> every summer would have its nest very close to us and dive bomb and try and get us and peck us to death. So anyways, I don't really like birds. And then the other day, I saw this big raven basically in the middle of the street Ooh. trying to kill a squirrel. So I just see birds all the time. Yeah, birds are anyway, the thing, it seems I think like. that's it. <laughs> I don't know if it's just queen dink or anything, but dead bird today, maybe my spirit animal is a bird. 
I don't know. Anyways, love you guys. Stay bye. I don't know. Seems like it to me. Feels like a coinky dink. Hi, I'm calling for web crawlers. This is David Williams. And uh, I wanted to call you guys oh. and tell you a story that I want to tell you guys for about four weeks. Oh. But just got approval about two hours ago to be allowed to share it. Ooh. I'm a uh, child psychologist, ad- oh, yeah. adolescent psychologist. Yeah, also work for the uh, yeah. Behavioral Analyst Unit in the FBI. Yes, Criminal Minds. Which, uh, criminal Minds. You guys seem to yeah. like talking about Criminal Minds. <laughs> basically what we do. Um, but I was working on a case with a girl. The one who, who got away. Was 12 when I met her. They lived on a family farm. And um, this little girl was complaining about lights in her windows, um, different incidents at night, things happening around her house. And um, after statement with local psychologists, they called us to figure out if there was anything going on with her. Um, and what she was seeing was blue lights, yellow lights coming through a window at night, late at night, but no one else could confirm or say they saw the lights. Well, um, they set up cameras one night to see what okay. she was experiencing and just looking out the windows. And they caught the blue, bluish, yellowy, orange lights through the window. And um, when that happened, they called us to see what was going on, if there was some type of criminal activity, anything was happening to her, because she was missing multiple hours of time. She couldn't remember. She says she only knew the lights, but she, in her memory, it's kind of like she just knew they existed, but she never truly saw them. Um, so then they set up the camera. We came out. We set up more cameras on the inside of her house and outside to see if there was cars or any distinct planes in the background. They live on a farm in a very um, isolated area. And so when they set up the cameras, the blue lights for a second time came on. But interestingly, they only came on in the inside camera. You could not see them facing outward anywhere else. Um, Hmm. I was brought in to speak with her about different mental health issues she may have had just to do an evaluation. And um, after the second night when we were there, um, when we caught the camera, the lights on the inside, but not the outside, we noticed that um, on her back of her arms and the back of her legs and like her forearms and like just below the knee was a very distinct pattern of like a sunburn. What? It was like a little what? oval shape on both sides and both arms, very uniform, measured the same length and everything else, which was very strange. Um, after speaking with her, she had no mental issues. Um after the, we started examining and more people were around, I guess the lights stopped coming. And um, since then, they have, it was a family farm. It was like four generations or something, but they did end up selling it to move to not have a little girl around the lights. And this last time I was in person with her, it was 2017. We still do like a monthly visit, but um, the FBI has kept this pretty locked down and we still don't know what it is, but I have been gift. There's a part two. Oh my God, this is insane. This is crazy. This is a problem for web crawlers. This is David Williams. The hang up is real. I feel the shame. <laughs> um, but I was going to say that I've been given permission by the FBI to just kind of broadly tell you guys about it. I won't give you guys any names or anything else. But um, since 2017, we've had eight other cases of very similar activities what? similar burn activities all kids have been under 14 um what? we what haven't had anybody on? else so we don't we don't know exactly what is happening um but with all the government releasing alien things lately i don't know if this will be a part of it um i know it's the beginning of may when i'm calling so i don't know if there'll be more information online so far i can't find anything else other than me being allowed to tell you but uh just found it interesting that you know, people are seeing her little children are seeing blue lights and yellow and orange lights coming through the windows, but you can't see them on the outside. You can only see them specifically through their windows. We set up cameras facing all windows in their entire house and we filmed them sleeping, but you could see no other windows saw the light. Even her brother's window that was right next to the room, right next to hers, the window that should be the same place, you should have been able to see the light coming through his, but you were unable to see it on the camera even though it's facing in the same kind of direction that you would have seen if there was a car or, or a flashlight or something weird. like that. It was just very centralized to her room, which was very weird. And we've had it from kids 14 all the way down to seven. So it's a very interesting, bizarre thing that we are still looking into. But I just thought I'd share that interesting story. Have a great day. Whoa. 
I mean, sounds what? like kids are being abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those kids are being abducted. Uh, yeah, those kids uh, are being abducted, bud. That's strange. That's wild. That's really wild. Weird. Uh, okay. Well, on to the next. Hey, web crawlers. It's Emily of Kentucky Ghost Dog fame. Can you um, hear this? No. no. Yeah, it's real muffly. Whoever left a 606 message, it was a two-parter, we can't hear it. So yeah. so call, call back, back, please. Yeah, please it sounds do. Like, yeah. yeah, it sounds like there's something on top of the speaker, perhaps. Oh, uh, yeah, like a finger, yeah. maybe. Mm, maybe it's a mm, finger. Maybe it's a finger. Okay. The old finger trick. <laughs> okay, next message. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. My name is Heidi. And um, right now I'm looking up outfit inspirations and I was looking through Dark Academia. But then I found this subset called Cryptid Academia or Cryptid Core. And I was like, hold up, I got to call the web crawlers and tell them about this. This is finally something I got to call them and tell them about. So it's basically like an aesthetic where uh, of like clothing where you like go hunting for like cryptids and it's like the <laughs> vibe they're trying to give off and you kind of like cryptid core explore abandoned places, like it. haunted places and like graveyards and like caves and i just thought it was like so funny that there's like this like sub genre okay. like of like dark academia dark academia devoted to like cryptids that like i had to like oh. share it with you guys so <laughs> it's called cryptid core and it's, uh, the photos of it are just like pretty interesting online so yeah so anyways that's what i was calling about i hope you guys have a nice day bye um, okay, core. I feel like uh, I kind of already do dress cryptid core. <laughs> oh no, let me look it up. <laughs> I just sent it to the core. group chat. Oh my god, it's so cute. Yeah, like I love this. This I 100% want this to be my new aesthetic. Yeah, Are you kidding? Right? And it's also on the thing you sent, it's like a uh, dress like this, basically, if you're into cryptid core. And it's like it's like a backpack and then shorts and like a sweater and like a national park jacket. And then there's a, a slice of blueberry pie. This is very so like cute. khaki brown nature colors and like cool glasses and a hat that says I'd rather be ghost hunting. Ooh, I love this. Oh, my God. I'm this is this. so embarrassing. This is so funny. So I, I also, I clicked on another picture and it's like how to dress like two best friends who are very interested in the supernatural. And then it shows a, a text conversation between the two of them. And it said, hey, this guy at Spencer's Gifts is hooking me up with a case of Ecto Cooler. That's fun. Oh my God. We famously love Spencer's Gifts. We do. Yeah. We are so on brand. Wow. Wow. I love this is like one of my favorite photos I've ever seen is this collage of clothes you sent and a blueberry <laughs> one of pie. Th- your favorite photos you've light. ever seen. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it's insane, like, Maria. <laughs> no, but I'm being so serious. It's like so a walkie talkie, a slingshot. Oh my god. Come on, yeah, that's th- great. This is very aesthetically pleasing. Like, yes. here's another one. Like, I love it's basically just oh, like yeah. They, it's it's we'll yeah. post these. It is so cute. I think I'm I'm cryptid core. I love hiking boots with like jean shorts. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. And like a Look little at, beanie. One. <laughs> I love this. Oh my these god. are my favorite. Yeah, it's a lot of like a like a <gasps> vintagey shirt kind of thing. Oh, come on. That has to do with like the oh wilderness or God. monsters, jean shorts, combat boots, and like a, a heavier jacket. It's so cute with like a neutral oh my color God, scheme. I need this t-shirt, protect cryptid wildlife. Oh my God. And we, Have you, I, I'm pissed we that didn't is make the that cutest. t-shirt. Wow. Only you can protect cryptid wildlife. And then it's like Smokey the Bear. And he's but buff it's as hell. Sa- Sasquatch. It's Sasquatch and he's buff as hell. I need oh that Oh my shirt. God. And then what's this deer with bat wings? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. And then there's a thing at the top that says, it's like a text between someone and a stranger. And it says, do you like the Mothman? And the stranger says, no. And then it just says, <laughs> you have disconnected. <laughs> Wow, this is so rad. We found wow, thank you for that voicemail. We have now found our like absolutely new aesthetic. Cryptid core. I love this. These I are my go, favorite. I want to go like hiking in, in the woods now. 
I yeah. Well, it's well, it's not hiking. Could, it's searching for Bigfoot. Searching, hunting. Oh my gosh! I, I got to get this. to the woods immediately. <laughs> got to get myself to the woods. Oh, look at this one. Uh, I mean, this is kind of like the same, but this one also has a skirt. Oh, a, a green and blue plaid skirt. Yeah, I mean, with like a leather bomber. Did you just send it to Melissa? Why no, I sent I it to the group chat. Web crawlers chat. I don't have it. I'm freaking out. I need to see it. <laughs> well, you'll never know. Well, maybe you got a slow internet connection over there. Yeah, it looks like oh you're my dealing God. with some slow oh, internet. Wow. There's also Teenage Ghost Hunter Core. Goblin oh, Core. Oh, my God. Google Goblin, Goblin core. core. Guys, this is how we detoured to oh, doing our own clothing line. These brown overalls. Do you see this Goblin Core? Yeah, I mean, Come look at on. this. Something's going on with my internet. <laughs> <laughs> Maria's going to lose it. <laughs> if Maria doesn't get these goblin core pictures stat, she's going to fucking <laughs> look lose it. Look at that it. sweater. It is so cute. Come on. Okay, can you resend the other cryptic core one? Because it's not coming through and I'm like freaking out. On my on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is so picture. funny oh wait here i just got i just I, I just i just oh my god stop girl i know <laughs> it says the as- goblin core aesthetic wears thrifted clothes and oversized sweaters admires mushrooms and moss collects rocks lots of rocks probably loves bugs and frogs Hoards small shiny things, loves adventures, likes clutters, plants, a little crazy. They aren't garbage, they're treasure. Probably dirty 24-7, but they don't mind. We'll eat anything, anytime. Wow. We'll eat anything, anytime. Okay, yeah, we can move on now, I guess, but I love this aesthetic. Oh my God, the green green witch, the green witch uh, aesthetic is on Prozac, 20 milligrams. That's how much I take. What? Wow. A magic eight ball, a map. Love this. These are my favorite colors. That Prozac pill is like my favorite I, color. That's like a gorgeous color palette. Like a Mine's g- blue. I know. Muted mint green. Yeah, it's like a, mo- yeah. a muted moss green. This is like, it's like a moss. sage. You know what it is? It's like dressed like a frog and toad. That's what all these outfits are. Well, we're going to have to post these <laughs> on on Thursday when they, because people are just going to lose Ooh, their Maria, minds this is this. you to a T. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, my God. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm going to love it too much. Oh. oh, my God. Look at that little toe. No, oh but God, look, look, at, look at look at the flowers. quote. It's the quote that's you. <laughs> Looking for trouble. And if I cannot find it, I will create it. <laughs> yes. The Joker. Oh, my God. But honestly, like that green color is my favorite color. Yeah. And so the, like, wow. Well, this is our new aesthetic. We have to change everything about ourselves. I got to get rid of my all my clothes and buy new ones. <laughs> I, I want this like navy, this like deep, this deep moss green typewriter. Like and I'll just start typing, yeah. typing who knows what. I just want a backpack full of toads and slugs. <laughs> backpack full of toads, Masushi. Toads and slugs. Oh my god! Wow, oh my that was my god. favorite voicemail. Only because now my whole I life know. and aesthetic has changed. Goblin core. Goblin core. Okay. <laughs> crawlers. Hello, this is Joran calling you. Um, I am listening oh. to the episode about Phil killing his wife in that small town. Oh, Phil and Missy. It reminded me of the story that is told in the uh, movie Bernie by Richard Link- Linklater. Jack Black is in oh, it. Yeah. He plays the uh, oh. killer character. And... It is a true story of this guy, Bernie, who lives in a small Texas town, and he's caring for this old woman, and she dies, and I guess I will just say that because you should, if you are unfamiliar, you should watch the movie and stuff, and it uh, it seems, well, not, not totally similar, but similar in some ways to this uh, Bill guy. Um, we're checking out, maybe having an episode on whatever. I don't know. That's, uh, that's your bag. Just make those decisions, of course. Um, <laughs> all right. And I will stop rambling now. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Wait, so I didn't, 
I know of this movie. I haven't watched it though. What movie was it? The Richard Linklater. Bernie. Bernie. Oh, it's good. Right. It's it's with Shirley MacLaine and Jack Black, and it's about uh, Jack Black plays a guy who like becomes or is really good friends with this much older woman, and she kind of you know like berates him and everything, and he oh. he, he kind of loses it. Interesting. Loses it. I'll have to watch it's, it's it. Good. It's fun. Okay, four more. Here we go. Hi, this message is for web crawlers. My name is Kaylin, and I actually was born and raised in San Luis Obispo, uh, where Kristen Smart went missing. It's absolutely wild to see what's happening right now because my mom was in grad school at Cal Poly at the time. I wasn't born yet, but my aunt went to school with Paul Flores, like. We have always known he was a creep. Everyone, without a doubt, knew it was him in our town. That billboard that you guys were talking about, that's by Susan Torres' house, that actually isn't new. We've added other new billboards, and they updated that one. But the billboard by Susan Torres' house has been there my entire life. Oh. She has lived two blocks from this billboard for 20 years. Oh, I, I went to school Whoa. right up the street, and I remember driving by it every single day. And oh, I remember the first crazy. time I asked my mom, who's Kristen Smart? Like, what is that? And she told me, oh, this man that, you know, we went to school with named Paul killed her, and they buried her in his parents' house, and they haven't been able to dig her up. That's, like, that was a fact. That wasn't just theories or rumors. Like, right. everyone has known it for years, so it's crazy to see getting this national attention, especially from people like you guys that I listen to all the time. It's really cool and really heartwarming that what Chris has done with his podcast actually was able to do this for our small town. Um, But yeah, that's it. You guys are my favorite podcast and hearing you talk about this case meant so much to me and a lot to my family as well. So thank you guys. Have a good one. That's crazy. So yeah, I guess I one couldn't of the really hear anything she said. What happened? She said one of the billboards that was by Susan Flores' house, Paul, you know, the Paul Flores who killed Kristen Smart. One, yeah. The billboard has been up there for like twenty years. That said, oh my god, something like turn your son in or something. And they put up new billboards. I thought it was a new billboard, but no, it's Holy been there. And she's shit. lived in this house. Hasn't That's moved, insane. Oh which my is like, God. yeah, you're that's living bizarre. there because you have a dead body in your backyard and you don't yeah, want to move. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. insane. Okay, next message. Hey, web crawlers. Um, this is Alexa. And first I want to say I have to stop calling y'all in the middle of listening to episodes because last night while I was listening to a mailbag episode, I called to tell y'all about the American Girls podcast. Um, and then like five <laughs> minutes later in the episode, y'all got Rosie's voicemail and mm-hmm. talked about the American Girls <laughs> podcast or how there is one. I don't know if we were talking about the same one, but I was like, hmm, well, a bit embarrassing, but it's fine. Um, I listened to the full episode though about y'all talking about Ted the Caver and I just wanted to tell y'all about the Nutty Putty Caves. Um, I don't think y'all have done an episode mm-hmm. on this. I don't think I'll have. If you'll have, I'm sorry. No. Um, but it's like, I listen to a lot of true crime stuff. Obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of your show and other shows like it. And nothing like really super disturbs me except for this nutty putty cave story. Like this one like gives me nightmares. It like makes me feel physically what is it? disgusting yeah. and ill because it's just, it's so creepy to me. It's about this guy who was spelunking um a lot like Ted the Caver was um but he ended up getting stuck like almost completely upside down um and they couldn't get him out and spoiler alert he passed away unfortunately um I'm sorry I had to cough he passed away unfortunately but it's just like it's so disturbing to me because and just the thought of like being that trapped and he was alive for like over 24 hours um (sighs) And they were trying to get him out. And it's just so creepy. Um, Y'all should, like, look it up and look for, like, the images of there's, like, a diagram, like, a drawing of what he looked like when he was stuck in that cave. If you just search, like, Nutty Putty Caves, it'll come up. And it's it's just, it's so disturbing. It's so creepy. And, like, even just looking at the pictures of Ted in the cave, it gives me major heebie-jeebies. And, um... 
I don't know. I just want to tell you all about that case because it's so scary. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, mm. there's like a YouTube channel called Fascinating Horror, not Fascinating Whores. Uh, that's my own personal YouTube channel, JK. <laughs> um, but Fascinating Horror did an awesome video on it. If anyone wants to check that out, I just wanted to um, tell you all about that case, the Nutty Putty Cave. Uh, Nutty Putty Cave, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, anyway, y'all are best. Oh my god, the diagram of this cave. I'm so confused. Is this picture of this guy in the cave, Is did he die in there, or is that just what the cave looks like? I don't know, I think it's I'm just confused. What the cave look like, looks like. Because it says, Nutty it's Putty. so horrible. Nutty Putty Cave will be permanently sealed with a body inside. Oh, they never actually got this guy's body. I mean, the diagram of the cave is crazy. Like you go down and like you go in, but then like you just climb straight down. Like that's the scariest shit. Why would anyone go down there? I don't need to be in any confined spaces. Like, thank you. That's no. Not, no, thank you. John Edward Jones entered Nutty Putty Cave around 8 p.m. in 2009, a few days before Thanksgiving. He was he was married, had a one-year-old daughter, uh, he, about an hour into the caving expedition, John decided to find the Nutty Putty Cave Formation known as the Birth Canal, a tight passage that spelunkers must crawl through carefully if they dare. Ugh. He found what he thought was the Birth Canal and inched his way into the narrow passage head first, moving forward using his hips, stomach, and fingers, but within minutes he realized he'd made a grave mistake. Oh. John knew he was now just about stuck and no room to turn around. He didn't even have room to wriggle back. The way he came out, oh my God, that's so horrible to think about. He had to try and press forward. He tried to exhale the air from his chest that he could could fit through a space that barely 10 inches across and 18 inches high, about the size of an opening of a clothes dryer. Ugh. But when John inhaled again, his chest puffed back out and he got stuck for good. Nope, 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 oh. nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Oh. Simply no. Nope, 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 nope. nope that's nope. from all that's interesting.com. It goes on if anyone wants to, you know, look on their own, but oh geez Louise. Terrifying. Jeez right. right. Louise. Last uh, last message. Hey, this is Amber Lee, and I have never ever called in or responded to any of my podcasts before, but I started listening to you guys just recently, and I haven't listened from the beginning, so I've only listened to a few episodes, but I listened to the one on female serial killers, and you guys need to check out Catherine Knight from Australia, I believe, or New Zealand. She's very, very cray-cray. She basically skinned her husband uh. Uh, in a kiddie pool in her front, in her house, what? in her front, like, living room, and then she was cooking him for dinner Ooh. and the cops found pieces of him on the stove. She was in the bedroom asleep. But the craziest thing is on the table, it was set for dinner with little name plates with her kids' names or his kids' names. And she was going to serve him to the children. No. And when the police got there, they couldn't get in because there was like a, like a sheet of something in front of the door. Well, uh, surprise, it wasn't a sheet. It was his skin because she Ooh. expertly skinned him with Ooh. the knives that she received for being, like, the number one, like, pig slaughterer at the pig, I don't know, wherever she worked where they killed pigs. But oh, anyway, my God. When I heard about female serial killers, I was like, you got to check out Catherine Knight. And I love you guys. You guys are pretty cool. And I can't wait to listen to all of the podcasts. I have a lot of catching up to do. Thanks. Ooh. Uh, well, we will have to look into her, that's for sure. Oh, God. Oh, wait, there's another message from the same person. Hey, this is um for web crawlers. I actually called in before, and I said something about female serial killers, and I'm not sure if I said it was for web crawlers. But this one is for them as well, and it's about American dolls. Did you guys know that the 1980s doll came out, and her name is Courtney? And I was just wondering, like, if they did a 1990s doll, like, what do you think her accessories would be? And what do you think her name would be? Because I was thinking Gia would be, like, a really cool 1990s name. Gia? But anyway, what? that's all. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye. Well, you know what's interesting is I had the Look Like Me American Girl doll, which I probably got probably in, like, 97 or 98. And yeah. that's, she, you could get 90s stuff with her, which is Melissa, the the computer you got you know that miniature yeah. american girl doll computer yeah. that's one of the things i bought and it was like a desktop mac computer and stuff oh my like god that. that's so, insane oh 
Did you say 80s or 90s? Oh, 90s. Oh, sorry. I th- 90s. Uh, sorry, would she be... said Courtney came out from the. Courtney was eight. 90s Maybe would Jessica be... would be the Jessica 80s? and Ashley were yeah. the two most popular names, Melissa. You're right. I literally Googled it. The top names of 1990 uh-huh. Jessica and Ashley. Wow. Okay, so Ashley. it would be. Maybe it would be. Yeah, Jessica or Ashley, and she would be from like. The Mall of America. Where's the Mall of America? Or like Orlando. Oh, yeah. She'd be yes. like from Orlando. A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's and she's like a kid pop star. She like wants to be. Yeah. yeah so she's like on like yeah. the Disney that Disney show or something. But she'd have like a flannel shirt to tie around her waist. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because her well her her big her big sister her big sister Jessica is like really into grunge and stuff and, and so they butt heads a lot. Yeah yeah oh my god that's so funny wow that's crazy yeah and maybe she's dressed in lisa frank oh <laughs> to bring it full oh circle oh my god um, lisa frank trapper fun. keeper yeah we gotta design our own doll um is that it for our voice models that is all righty friends um and enemies uh <laughs> Haters. Thank you so much for your voicemails as usual. Thank you for that. Your crazy emails, especially the one about Jeffrey Dahmer's refrigerator. <laughs> it's so illuminating. We love them so much. All this insider info. Please continue to call and email us. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stetton. And I producer Maria. Bye bye. Bye. original powered by ACAST